Welcome back to the Jatai Academy. I'm Russell Mays, Director of Content, and today we're going to be covering different ways to cut your bangs. So let's get started. The first thing we want to pay attention to is sectioning out for bangs, because the bangs are going to be sectioned very specific to each person's head shape. So what we want to focus on initially is I'm going to lay the comb on top of the head where it starts to curve forward and down. That's going to be the high point of the section where I'm going to take that. And then from there, I'm going to take that to the center of the recession. So sectioning out this right here, the center of the recession is usually going to hit right at the corner of the eyebrow, right at the front of the temple. After we got this sectioned out, this is all the hair that has the ability and the tendency to fall in this person's eyes. So we want to make sure that we get all that control. We can always add more if we want to by going further back. We can also go wider if we want to open the face up more and keep hair away from the face if we want to section it wider. We can also take less. We could take, you know, half of that if we don't want a full solid bang. So you have variations that you can do by taking it bigger or smaller, but this is the general tendency of all the hair that can fall on the face. So now let's cover the three different types of bangs that we're going to be dealing with. The first one is just really blunt and solid and heavy. The second one is going to be layered with some movement or without movement. And the third one's going to be highly textured. So on this example right here, we're going to do something that's very solid and very heavy and straight across. And so in order to do that, I'm going to use my Jatai Tokyo scissors. These are great. I like a smaller scissor when I'm dealing with around the bang, so I have a little bit more control. Now starting off here, doing my blunt section, it's a natural tendency for me to take a section in the center, comb that into my hand, and then go to cut. Now if I do this, there's a couple of things I have to focus on. The first thing, how thick the section is. Also, when I'm combing it, I'm combing everything smooth with zero tension, and then I just lock my finger in, and then go through and cut blunt. Now the problem with doing it in my finger is I've already got one finger worth of elevation. So if I do that, that means that this is gonna be a little softer than what is the maximum bluntness that I can get. So if I want it blunt, more blunter, blunter, I'll go through, place my comb, push this into the spine of the comb, and then I can go through and cut that straight across with a lower elevation because it's harder to clean this up on the skin because I have eyebrows to deal with and eyelashes and all that. So I want to be mindful of that. Another thing I want to be mindful of is how much spring she has in, with any kind of calyx around the front. So that's why I don't use any tension at all. Get everything combed, push into the comb wherever I want, then go through, cut that straight across. From there, move to the side. Now here, if I want a little bit of arc or a curve, I can start curving it right at the inside of the eye. Angle that here, curve that down. Everything's still being cut blunt. Zero tension or as minimal tension as the comb will give me. Angle that down, try to guess at the same angle as the other side. Take your time. Check that out. And that's looking okay. Being mindful of eyebrows if I'm going to freehand like this. Don't ask me how I figured out you have to be very careful here or else you'll end up cutting a line through somebody's eyebrows. Here we have our blunt example. Pretty straightforward, pretty easy. Now we have my lovely client whose hair has grown out too much, so we're gonna go through and trim her bangs. So what I'm gonna do is, since she has an off-center part, I'm gonna find where the head starts to curve forward, go straight down to the center of her recession, right through there. Pin that out of the way. Now the same thing on the other side. 
Now on bangs that I'm going to layer and it has a lot of movement to it, it can either be a neutral shape where I just hold everything straight up and cut it and let that fall, or I can pull it to the left or to the right if I want to introduce movement that's going from the left or to the right. So here we want to keep some movement getting this out of her face, but I want to keep it fairly solid as well. So I'm going to start right off of her parting, take a small little bit of that, pin that out of the way, small little bit of the heavy side, pin that out of the way. So now I have the center piece of the two sides, and this is going to be the shortest piece and everything else will flow off of this. So I'll take this, hold out off the peak curvature, which is going to be at that angle, find what kind of length that I want. I want to keep the shortest piece a little bit shorter than her nose. Now I'm not going to use a lot of tension because then watch, it springs up and I've got that much shortness in there that I didn't compensate for. So I want to use very little tension, plant. I'm not pulling it straight and hard. I just want to get a good control of it. See where that's falling and then go through and point cut that right in the middle and then look at it and say, oh, okay, that's not too bad. A little shorter than I wanted girl, but it'll grow out just fine. She's okay with that. From here, I can either start on the light side or the heavy side. It doesn't matter. I'll tend to start on the heavy side since that tends to be more important. So now I have to determine at what angle I want to create here from my shortest piece to my longest piece, and I will mirror that angle in my parting. I'm going to hold that at the same angle of my parting. There's my guide that I just cut. Clean that up. Point cut that over. My next piece I'm point cutting this to keep everything nice and soft. Next piece, hold that over. Please click subscribe, give us a thumbs up if you like the video, and click the notification bell to be notified of future videos. Last piece. Hold over. Now we'll drop that and you'll see the angle that starts to get introduced as it flows over to the right side. So now I'm going to take my center piece that was the guide for the right side, get that out of the way, pin that up and do the same thing on the left side. Check out Jatai Academy on all your favorite social media outlets. Well, that certainly opens up her face quite a bit. You can see how it's shorter over her right eye and gradually gets longer. The right side is heavier, it's got more hair. This side over here just blends just enough to open up her cheek. And I think that that looks pretty good. Now we're gonna do some really highly textured bangs where there's not really a solid shape. It's more of softened length that allows it to be styled in many different ways. Now, if you do something straight across, you can go left or right. If I start to cut an angle in it where it's shorter one area or the other, it will flow to the longest piece, but it will flow in a much more piecey, softer way than if I was to just layer it with straight scissors. I'm going to take a center section right in the middle. She's got a lot of texture to her hair. So we want to keep her fringe being very soft and textured as well. So I'm going to pull this forward. And then I'm going to take my Tokyo thinning scissor and with the straight blade on the bottom, I'm going to go through and cut this length with nothing but the thinning scissor. I could go through and certainly do a razor and razor cut, which I'll show you an example of that. But the methodology is the same as far as creating softness. So I'll pull this out, curvature of the head, go through, 
and basically point cut across with my thinning scissor. Now having the tooth blade, the cutting blade on top, we got that nice and soft through there. Now from here, I'm going to pivot out of the center, take a little bit more hair. Now after I've pivoted from the center, I'm going to take just a small piece as my guide and pull this hair over to the left. There's my little short pieces. And now I'll go through, cut my length off and start to build my shape through the texturizing scissors going towards the right. You're going to feel like this is going to take a lot of effort, but it doesn't really. It will remove as much hair as you want in one section, and I, as I hit it more and more times, it's going to remove and remove and remove, and it's going to go rather quickly. So now I start to see my shape really building up. I can curtain that a little bit more if I want, but that's looking pretty good, except for that right in her eyeball. Let's cut that out. Now I'll go back, take a little piece in the middle, pivot on the left side, and do exactly the same thing, but the opposite way. Make sure our sides are matchy-matchy. A little bit more down through here. But that looks pretty good. I'm liking that. So we got a little bit of movement here, but we got a really, really soft line that's not nearly as solid as the others. So it allows for a lot more versatility when you style it. All right, so let's take a review. Blunt, angled, and then highly textured. Those are really the three major ways of cutting bangs. Now you can mix and match as you want. You can take a solid shape and do it with a thinning scissor and keep it soft or with a razor. If you do it with a razor, you'll have a really, really jagged line, which I'll show you one of the examples of that. Um, so you have a lot of versatility. If I want angles, if I want blunt, if I want inverted, this is where it fits on the head. The tool determines the texture and you are the master of the tool. Please check out the Jatai Academy. There's a lot of really great information on there. Also, let us know what you'd like to see in the future. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. And thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.